All right, so Paul, there's a lot of asteroids out there, but they're not, you know, all clumped together. Where are they? Well, here's a diagram showing where they are. Okay. And there are some all over the place, but you can see the vast majority are a little bit outside of Mars's orbit and not too close to Jupiter's orbit. Yep. And, and so you said there are, there are a few in the inner solar system, but yeah, there's but the vast majority error in, in that gap. That's right. And there are two clusters called the Trojans, which are in Jupiter's orbit. Yeah, but there's one before. They're called the Greeks and the Trojans, <laughs> and one before and one after Jupiter in its orbit. Yep. So basically, Jupiter dominates the entire distribution of other planets. You can't have an asteroid in an orbit which isn't near a planet, because it won't stay in that orbit. The planet okay. will come past and probably not collide with it, but pull it into some other orbit by oh. its gravity. Yep. And Jupiter, being very big, is the one that does most of the trouble. Okay. So the Trojans, for example, they rotate around at the same speed as Jupiter, always staying before and after it and staying in these irregular clouds. So, so essentially they're, they're, they never get closer to Jupiter, they never get further away, they just always stay there. That's right. There's a stable orbit. Yep. This is called the Lagrange points. So here you have a sun and a planet, in this case it's the Earth, but it also applies to Jupiter. There's a certain number of places where you can orbit where you don't get pulled in by the gravity of either the Sun or Jupiter. So it's essentially it's because the gravity is being equally pulled in those directions? Yeah, so if one place is in front, the L4 and L5 places, where you're trying to orbit around, yep. but you're actually a little bit closer in and being pulled backwards by Jupiter, and here a little bit closer and being pulled forwards. And it turns out that the, the balance of the force of the Sun and Jupiter and what you want to orbit means it's a stable position. Okay, yep. There's also stable points at L3, L1, and L2. So L1 is between, so you're kind of far away enough from the sun. You're balancing in between the sun and the planet's gravity. Yep. Or you're on the other side where the sun and the planet's gravity add up enough to hold you into an orbit. That's right. And the same over here, right? They yes. add up to hold you enough into the orbit. These are unstable. It's very hard to stay there, but these are stable. Okay. You don't expect to see asteroids here and there because while there is technically like balancing on the, a pencil on its tip, yeah. In principle, it can balance, but in practice, even the slightest perturbation will make it fall away. In fact, this is something we actually explore a little bit in the space course because we can use this for spacecraft, which can balance themselves with some help. Yes, but you're not going to find asteroids in these, but you do find them in the Lagrange points. Ah, so that's why we always have the group before and after Jupiter. That's the stable place. Um, and we've got a space probe called Lucy currently on its way to visit these things. Yep. And it's uh, going to do an orbit that loops backwards and forwards between the two visiting asteroids in both. Okay. So it's going to essentially, it left the Earth. It's going to fly around, go out to one pocket, and then go back to fly to the next one? Yeah, ping-ponging past the Earth en route. Okay. So that's one stable place, that's the Lagrange points of Jupiter. Yep. Now the main belt, let's, if you look at, there's a semi-major axis, this is basically how far out the asteroid is. Okay, so the Earth is... the number of asteroids. The so Earth is at one with, astronomical unit, yep. Jupiter's at five, Earth. Mars is about one and a half. And so this is close to Mars, but not too close, and yep. not too close to Jupiter. And what you can see is the asteroids are not spread uniformly over this range. Yeah, there's very distinct groupings of them. Yeah, and there are gaps. There are gaps, yep. very narrow gaps, with no asteroids. These are called the Kirkwood gaps. Okay. Now, the funny thing is, if you look at the orbital period something would have in this gap, yep. it's got a very special numerical property. And what is that? It's in a particular integer ratio with the orbit of Jupiter. What that means okay. is this gap is in a 3 to 1 integer ratio which means that something in the scap, if there was something, which there isn't, yep. would orbit exactly three, three times for every one time that Jupiter went around the Sun. Okay, and here... This is a five to two gap, which means something in this thing would orbit five times for every two times Jupiter went past. Seven to three, two and to two one. to one marks the outer edge. There's almost no asteroids beyond that. Yep. So what you're saying is that these very specific points, they're going around the Sun at the exact right ratio and an integer sequence as what Jupiter does. And these are called resonant orbits. Yep. And there are many examples of these in the solar system. One famous one is the moons of Jupiter. Yep. The inner moons are in resonant orbits. So if you've got Io, then Europa has exactly twice the orbital period and Ganymede exactly four times the orbital period. So it does. We talked about this earlier in the that's course. That's right. 
what this means is if there's an exact if there wasn't an exact ratio, so let's say you're going around the sun 2.7395 times for every one time I go around, yep. we might go close every now and then, but it'll be fairly random when we do. That's right. So but if it was exactly two to one, so for example here, where well, you'll see they're now in the same place. Yep. Next time they're not, and then they're in the same place again. Next time they're not. So every second orbit they line up. Yep. Likewise, these ones, um, the outer ones line up there, not this one, and there. the next one. There. So what you get is a repeating pattern. Okay. It's not just random. If it was a non-integer ratio, when they close encounter, sometimes Jupiter's going to pull it one way, sometimes Jupiter's going to pull it the other way. But because uh, it's a repeating pattern... It's always pulling at the same time. In the, same, the same direction. That's right. So what this means is that something in this... Like, the resonance orbits can be very stable. Yep. So for example, the Galilean satellites of Jupiter, they're in orbit where these regular pools actually help stabilize them. Yep. Uh, Neptune and Pluto are in a resonant orbit. That's right. And again, that helps stabilize them because otherwise they would, it, it's, it's doing a careful dance. We always avoid each other. That's right. But normally being in these resonant orbits, especially with something as big as Jupiter, is bad news because it means Jupiter's going to be pulling you the same time on a regular basis. And that's going to pull you out of this orbit. So essentially this resonance clears out the asteroids there. So it wasn't that there wasn't never asteroids there. It's just this regular pattern always yes. pulled it out, which is kind of why you get this very sharp decrease. That's right. So that's um, so the asteroid belts are, are very are complicated. It looks, it's like a, it looks like just a mob of asteroids going around, but it's not. There's some interesting patterns there. Interesting.